here uh, miss the fact that, that in our looking at the genealogy of Christ, that uh, Matthew, when he goes through the, the kings, after you leave Solomon, he goes through the kings, and if you compare it to 1 Chronicles chapter 3, he leaves out Azariah, Jehoahaz, and Amaziah. He actually just leaves them out of the list and immediately goes to um, uh, Uzziah. <laughs> Look at that, Azariah. Anyhow, Uzziah, he goes to Uzziah, picks it up, and then he misses a couple more down here, and then misses the very last king. And we'll talk about these another time. I want to deal with these three kings up here, because when you read the commentaries, you really never do get a real good, clear answer. And I'm not sure I have a satisfactory answer of why they're left out, but there is an answer, and you can kind of examine it. And, and, and if it's not the answer, you're going to learn some things about those kings anyhow, and, and we'll will give some reason that it's there, but we did know this. We ended the class by showing that when you get to, I forget what verse it is in chapter 1 of Matthew, that he tells you that when he's done with the list, he, he goes through three, uh, 14 generations from, from, it's not from Adam, it's Abraham to David is 14, David to, uh, from Solomon, to, yeah, from David or Solomon, uh, to Jeconias is 14 generations, and from Jeconias until the coming of Christ is 14 generations. So he purposely, is, and if you look, if you count these, there is 14 names in Matthew. So he, and he, what he did, he did intentionally to teach us or to bring us through 14 generations in that middle section of that division of the Bible as he's going through the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Um, but you ask the question then, you know, how can he just throw out three gen, three uh, generations. But that's one of the things you got to realize is in the Bible we always think that a generation is like a period of time, but a generation in your Bible is people that are linked together. Like when it says the generation that see sees these things, that, that's a group of people at a certain time they're going to see a certain event. He says to the, to the, uh, the Pharisees that they're a generation of vipers. Well that, what do you mean? They came yeah, they're, they're part of a lineage of all those who have denied God's word and actually opposed God's word through the centuries. He, he, he connects them to, uh, actually, Zedekiah, um, and, and not, not so much Zedekiah, but the times of Zedekiah, the, 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 the false teachers that were back there. He relates the Pharisees and said that they're part of that generation. So that a generation isn't always a period of time, so we don't have to actually cover time but there is connections, and, uh, and, and so it gives you a little bit def de different definition of ge uh, genealogy than, or generation than, than you might be used to. So start, let's start in 2 Kings chapter, 16, uh, chapter 8, verse 16. Now this is, this is good Bible study for you just to know something and get a handle on it. We've we already laid out, uh, and I, I don't know if you all know this, that on, after Solomon, because Solomon multiplied so many wives and then built them I, idols in, in Jerusalem, their own temples in Jerusalem, that God divided the kingdom. And under Rehoboam, his son, the kingdom was divided where the ten northern tribes told Rehoboam, you keep taxing us and we're not going to let you be our king. And he said, I'm going to make my, taxes, my taxing worse. So they left him, appointed their own king, which happened to be Jeroboam, <laughs> instead of Rehoboam. They appointed Jeroboam, who's not even of the lineage of David, to be their king. And there's a split in the kingdom then. There's the ten northern tribes, and they take the name Israel. And the southern two tribes, which is Judah and Benjamin, they take the name uh, uh, of, of Judah. In fact, that's probably where we call them Jews. That's probably when that name came about because of that division. So the, 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 the Judah, the southern two tribes, they always follow the lineage of David. They were the rightful place. I mean, they got Jerusalem, they got the temple worship, they got the priesthood, they got everything that God instituted, and they got the right king. The other one, they're, they're totally in apostasy. They, end, they, or they open up in Dan and Beersheba, two false places to go worship rather than go to Jerusalem because Jeroboam didn't want them ever going back to Jerusalem because they'll reunite. So he, he set up idolatrous worship in, in Dan and Beersheba to keep them in the northern. And then, and, and then none of the kings in the, in the northern are of the lineage of David. So they're not recognized by God as, as kings in Israel. Uh, his king, his anointed. Um, so 
with that in mind, we're, we're past Rehoboam. Uh, we're actually, we're going to start out with Joram. He's also, you'll see his name, Jehoram, because, <laughs> oh, it's not even on here. But there's, you'll find that some of the kings in Israel have the same names of the kings of Judah. So what's real important when you read the book of Kings, and what Kings does different than Chronicles, it'll go back and forth. Israel's king, Judah's king, keeps back and forth. So when it throws a name, you, don't, you shouldn't assume immediately that that's the name of the guy we're looking at. Find out who he's a king of, and then, then, then you know for sure which king you're dealing with. So keep that in mind as we start looking at this. First king, uh, sec, Second Kings, chapter 8, verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 16. It says, In the fifth year of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel. So that's not the Joram we're interested in. Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat, being then king of Judah, Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. Now that's the one we want to follow. He's called Jehoram here. Another place he's going to be called Joram, just like that other king is. But we're, whoops. Yeah, that's so Jehoram. He's the son of Jehoshaphat, and, and he begins to reign. Now he is he is in the list in Matthew. But something happens here, and, and that's what we want to look at. Verse 17. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, as did the house of Ahab. Now, see, you should know some things. I've said enough that you know what the house of Israel is now. That's the northern who are in apostasy. He's living like them in apostasy. And it's related as did the house of Ahab. So you're going to, we're going to go back to Ahab in just a moment. But here's the reason he's walking like the kings of Israel. It says, for the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah for, da for David, his servant's sake as he promised him to give him always a light and to his children. So God promised David that he would never, that his seed would be established forever. So even though this guy did something evil, that God would have wiped him out, for David's sake, he doesn't wipe him out. But you'll notice, three generations after him, there's no names in Matthew. Because this man did evil. He actually, there was a time his dad, Jehoshaphat, got together with Joram, king of Israel, and actually did battle together. And when they were fellowshipping together, the, the king of Israel, his daughter, and Jehoshaphat's son, Jehoram, began to court, or at least get to know each other, and, and they married. And so now you've got this wicked king's daughter who's walking in the way that Ahab walked. Now, Let's, let's get a little bit about, what, about Ahab. Go back to 1 Kings chapter 16. There is, when you read the book of Kings, you need to know about certain individuals uh, that, are, that are like markers um, in the progress of, of uh, apostasy in the, in the northern tribes. For instance, I already told you that Rehoboam, he's king over Judah. But the ten northern tribes took Jeroboam and made him king, and he sets up that apostasy. He sets up idols in Dan and Beersheba and tells Israel, don't go down in Jerusalem, go to these idols. So he immediately turns the nation to idolatry, which is going to bring God's curse upon them, and they're going to eventually go into judgment. So, so that's what Jeroboam did. When you, when you go start going through the kings of Israel, you come across another king that, that brought Israel further into apostasy by the name of Ahab. And in 1 Kings 16, let's see, verse 28, it says, and notice who his father is, because it's kind of unique. It says, so Omri, now that was the king before, and this, now we're in Israel's kings. So Omri slept with his father, fathers and was buried in Samaria. See, their capital is in Samaria. You wonder why the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans in the New Testament? It's all the idolatry that, that was brought into that place. It says, And Ahab his son reigned in his stead. And, and in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel and Samaria twenty and two years. 
And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam son of Nebat. Now that's the first one who introduced the, all the idolatrous worship in Israel. If that wasn't bad enough, it says that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Eth Baal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. Now Jehovah's, at least when they went and did idolatrous worship, they said they were worshipping Jehovah, but they were doing it idolatry, you know, through idols. Now they said, forget Jehovah, we'll, we'll worship Baal. So he does even worse than, than Jeroboam did. And, and it's because of who he married. It says, and he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Um, and there's another incident that takes place that maybe we'll study another time. But, so you realize who Ahab is. Now his daughter, the king Jehoram of Judah, married that man's daughter. And now is bringing all that idolatrous worship down into Judah and mixing Jehovah worship with Baal worship in Judah. So go back to 2 Kings chapter 8. And now let's follow the generation that followed him. So he sets up all this evil worship going on and now his son... Ahaz, Ahaziah, uh, it says in verse 25, 1 Kings 8, 25, And in the twelfth year of Joram, son of Ahab, king of, of Israel, did Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, begin to reign. Twenty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, uh, when he began, when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri, king of Israel. Man, <laughs> this guy marries Ahab's sister, but his son marries Ahab's stepmother. <laughs> or mother, I don't know. <laughs> he actually, the younger guy marries the older. So, so now you're, you're really steeped into idolatry here. Uh, verse 27, And he walked in the way of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, as did the house of Ahab. For he was the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. <laughs> so anyhow, he, 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 you know, he, he just continues the idolatry. And his name, God is not going to reckon him in Matthew among the kings of Israel. Um, and, and, and when his mother's name is Athaliah, this guy dies. Uh, and if you pick up in chapter 11, when, when Ahaziah died, here's an interesting event that takes place. And when it says in chapter 2 Kings 11, 1, And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal, but Jeho uh, Jehoshaba, the daughter of Jehoram, Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took a uh, Joash, the son of Az uh, ah Ahaziah. Ahaziah, just let me pause and get it, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain, and hid him, even him uh, and, and his nurse, in, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And when you read on, they, the, the Jehoiada the priest waits seven years for this infant. Now we're down here to Joash, or Jehoahaz, his name is also called. They wait seven years for him to become seven years old. But all, during that seven years, Athaliah, now remember, the daughter of Omri, who was Ahab's, you know, father, she actually, she actually began to reign in Judah. And so you got a wicked queen from Israel reigning over Judah because she killed all the royal seed. Thought she wiped out the seed line of Christ. Now remember, we're, our whole study was to study the seed line of Jesus Christ and the prophecies about the seed line of Jesus Christ. Here, 
you can see she's wiping out all the royal seed, the lineage of David. If she succeeded, it was going to cut off the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ, at least through Solomon's lineage. And, and so it looks like, like, like Satan behind the scene is stopping, trying to prevent God from bringing about the seed of the woman through the seed of David, who's going to be king in Israel and bring salvation to the earth. And, uh, and so she thought she had achieved it. Now she's going to be the, the queen. And she does reign seven years, and then Jehoiada brings out Joash and presents him as the rightful king and then orders the, the, the guards to take and kill her. And they, they killed her, and Joash is enthroned when he's seven years old. So an, another interesting event that takes place there. But Joash, he, he's actually, in some sense, is a good guy. In another sense, he's not. Um, look over in 2 Kings chapter 12. It says in verse 1, it says, And in, in the seventh year of Jehu, Jeho, uh, Jehoahaz began to reign, and forty years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Ziba of Bathsheba. And Jehoahaz did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days wherein Jehoiada the priest instructed him. But the high places were not taken away. And the people did sacrifice and burn incense in the high places. So rather than going to the temple, they're going to these Baal worship places. The people are still continuing that. And even though this, this young man was instructed by Jehoiada the priest, like lived with him, instructed by him seven years, and was an advisor to him when he first took the throne, at the same time, he didn't totally take away the idolatry in Judah. So, in fact, it never does totally go away. They, 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 they end it for a little bit, and then it comes right back again, and it brings the downfall of the southern kingdoms of Judah, and that's why God carried him away into Babylon. But, but anyhow, you see a little bit about his reign. But that statement in verse 2, And Jehoahaz did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not always. Notice what it says. All the days wherein Jehoiada the priest instructed him. So while Jeho Jehoiada the priest is there giving him instruction, he's doing great things. He looks like a good king. And, you know, sometimes when you try to grade the kings, if you go through the kings, sometimes you give them a good mark, sometimes you give them a bad mark. But there's certainly, he's doing good because of the influence that, that, that is influencing him, Jehoiada the priest. Come over to, hold your place here, but come over to Second Chronicles chapter 24. When you read your Bible through, you'll see 2 Chronicles matches 1st and 2nd Kings as far as the information. But it, it doesn't give much talk about the kings of Israel because they're in idolatry. And Chronicles was probably written by Ezra, the, the, the priest. And so he's only really interested in the kingly line. And, and sometimes he adds more information about what took place that's not recorded in Kings. And this is one of those accounts. 2 Chronicles chapter 24, and look at verse 15. It says, But Jehoiada waxed old and was full of days when he died. A hundred and thirty years old was he when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. Now, now, after the death of Jehoiada came, uh, came, the, the prince, came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. <laughs> this is one of those kings that never makes up his own mind about anything. That, you know, people influence him to the good, so he does good. And now that influence is gone. And so now there, there's other people that are going to influence him to the negative, And he's going to do bad. And they left the house of the Lord, God of their fathers, and served groves and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this, their transgression. So all of a sudden, uh, trespass. So this, this king now, who was good, is now bringing evil upon the nation of Israel because more idolatry is coming into Jerusalem here. It says in... Uh, uh, verse 19, yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. And the Spirit of God came upon Zacharias, the son of Jehoiada, this priest who had protected uh, 
Joash or Jehoahaz, who had protected him all this time and influenced him. Now he's dead, but his son now comes and it's prophesies to uh, uh, jo Joash. It says, uh, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Zacharias, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. And they uh, conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness of Jehoiada his, his father, uh, his, his, Jehoiada his father had done, I didn't realize they called him his father, had done to him, but slew his son. And when he had, oh, the father, of, okay, of Zechariah. Um, but it says, and when he had died, he said, the Lord look upon it and require it. You know, there's kind of a little, you can see a little bit of the stoning of Stephen here. Only the Lord, Stephen said not to lay it to their charge. Um, well, that's what the Lord said. But uh, what did Stephen say? Did he say that? Yeah. yeah. Not to lay it to his. Anyhow, but, but here when, when it says, the Lord look upon it and require it, isn't it interesting? His name gets removed in the book of Matthew. His name don't show up there. So you got this guy who's going into idolatry and his son carried on that idolatry, his name's missing. Uh, and then, then his grandson, his name is missing. Now the next king, uh, where are we at? Nine. Amaziah. He's not really that bad of a king. Come over to, back to 2 Kings. And we go to chapter 14. Second Kings chapter 14 and verse 1. It says, In the second year of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, reigned Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah. He was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was uh, Jehoadadan of, of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not like David his father. He did according to all things as Joash his father did. Well, <laughs> all things. Well, if he would have done the good things only, that'd be great. But he did all things his father did, so he's got some goodness to him, but some badness to him as well. Uh, and and it, it goes on to talk about uh, the things that he did. And, uh, and, and so anyhow, you got the testimony of, of that man. Well, as you look at it, so after him, I don't know if I put the, the reference to the next king, but, but it doesn't matter. We covered the three kings that are missing before Uzziah is going to take the throne and he's going to be a good king and, and things are going to move along until there's more problems in Matthew's genealogy. So we have these three kings and there's, there's a verse of scripture that you might consider of why they're missing in Matthew. Come to Deuteronomy chapter 5. I've read different explanations. And, and it doesn't matter if I have the explanation. I know the Holy Spirit had Matthew leave them out. The Holy Spirit was not going to recognize them. And, and this could be the verse of why the, the Spirit is having Matthew leave them out. This is the second giving of the law to the nation of Israel. And it says uh, in verse 1, And Moses called all the children of Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ear this day, that you may learn them and keep and do them. The Lord your God make you a made you a covenant with a, made a covenant with us in Horeb, and the Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us who are all of us here alive this day. So they're they're the second generation who are ready to go into the land, and it says the Lord talked with with you face to face in the mount, out of the midst of the fire. And I, I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord. For ye were afraid by reason of the fire and went up 
went not up into the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, here's what God said, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou, hast, thou, shall, have, thou shall have none other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow, thy, bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So, Here's men who participated in the idolatry of Joram, and for three generations their name is missing. Now it's not that they were good kings and didn't, didn't participate in that idolatry. They followed in that idolatry. In fact, there was a verse I was going to read to you. Where was that verse? Uh, anyhow, I can't go back there. Uh, anyhow, there's three generations that are missing in the genealogy that seems to be the answer that, that the third generation, and then now after that, God's going to pick up again. What you're going to see is there are kings here that do dabble in idolatry like some of these kings, but there, there is a major sin here, a transgression that brought judgment certainly upon three of these kings or their names are left out, and, and even others who, who do uh, those sins, they're not in the degree of Jehoram, uh, uh, yeah, Jehoram. And, and, and so, you know, that's when you look at the list and why those names are left off, that's one of the answers that's in that list. Let me see that verse. 2 Kings 14. There was another section of verses I was going to read to you. And I... oh. The reason I'm looking for it is I don't want to go on to the other kings. I need to review all the things I want to say about them. So we're, we're actually done with our Sunday school lesson as far as today is concerned. But go back to 2 Kings chapter 14. Let me read the verses I left out because it's interesting. The point I just made, there's a point here concerning some, some right things that, uh, that uh, uh, Amaziah did. Uh, I read to you, 2 Kings 14, verses 1 through 3. Pick up in verse 4. It says, Howbeit the high places were not taken away, as yet the people did sacrifice and burn incense on the high places. And it came to pass, as soon as the kingdom was confirmed in his hand, that he slew the servants which, which had slain the king his father. And if you, we would have read other verses, we would have found out that the servants of, of, of uh, where are we at? of jo Joash, they actually killed Joash. And so now he's getting vengeance on them or justice for his father. Um, and it says in verse 6, But the children of the, of the murderers he slew, he slew not, according unto that which is written in the book of the law of Moses, wherein the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not be put to death for, his, for the children, nor the children be put to death for the fathers, but every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Isn't that interesting? We're looking at a passage that says he's going to pass judgment to three generations, but at the same time, the sin of the son doesn't depend... He, God doesn't judge a child based on the father. But what he does do is generations do suffer as a result of a previous generation. There is like judgments, national judgments, cursing upon the nation, upon the people that can go three generations down. These men had sins themselves. That's why we looked at them. They didn't just suffer because of their father, but they, they lived like their father did. And God judged for three generations and then picked up again. And, and so it shows the difference because that a lot of time becomes a question. How can God pass judgment for three generations when the child was innocent? And, uh, and he doesn't. He doesn't put the sin of the, the father on the children. They might suffer for the ch sin of their father. 
and, uh, and, and, and today the, all the nation of Israel is cut off by God, uh, but it's also the age of grace for them too. So anyhow, that, that, that explains three, and these other ones are a little bit uh, different explanation for, and, uh, and a little bit clearer explanation. We'll look at those next week. Okay. That's Sunday school, isn't it? <laughs> Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for the class, and we thank you for the Bible that when we search the scriptures, that we do see some things that are there and some answers to uh, how you guided Matthew in writing the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ and also how you preserved the seed royal all the way to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he comes of the seed of David, both through his adopted father, Joseph, but also through his birth mother, Mary. And we thank you, Father, that he is the Savior of the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.